What did you make those watches last night? Yeah, they were pretty impressive. Um, uh, they've, I mean, they've been a good team all season, so I, I feel like the final's probably um, the right one in the circumstances of the season and the games won throughout the regular season, the top two finishes and top two in the regular season end up playing against each other. So, um, you know, uh, I guess we both, both rightly so earned our position in this final um, and, and they played a good game last night. Having beaten them already twice this season, do you feel like you've got the upper hand? Uh, look, we, we're confident that we know we've got a game that can beat them, um, but we also know that if we don't play well tomorrow, they can equally come out and, and beat us. So um, there's definitely confidence within the group that you know, as long as we do what we do well um, and we learn on the fly out in the middle, depending on whatever the circumstances throw at us and you know, their batters can throw at us and bowlers can throw at us as well, that we've got the tools that can beat them. It does feel weird. I haven't had a look at it yet, but I will go out after this and, and have a look. Um, um, usually by this stage, we've played quite a fair few games out here on it, but um, I guess the first for both of us. Scorchers definitely haven't played any cricket um, on this on this wicket yet. So, uh, I mean, we've played here a lot before in the last in the last few years. I wouldn't be expecting too much different. Um, I think the wicket will be pretty good, uh, considering there hasn't been much cricket played on it. Um, the conditions here during the international series were outstanding for, for batting, so um, I, I, as I said, I haven't had a look at the wicket, but going off those games, um, which were only about a month or two ago now, um, you know, th th those wickets were outstanding and there was a lot of runs scored. Uh, well, that, that made the decision even easier, to be honest. You know, if, if he was 50-50 and sort of not sure about what he should do, it was a pretty easy decision. Um, you know, if he comes in, it probably robs someone's spot um, that's been doing really well the whole season and got us here. Um, so, you know, if his body's not quite right, there was no need to push it um, for, for this one game where, you know, we've shown throughout the year that we've got, um, we've got, we've got plenty to cover, um, albeit, you know, he's one of the best T20 bowlers in the world, if not the best, but um, we've been doing just fine as well. How big is it for a guy like, say, like Ben Dorsch? I imagine he might have been you know, one of the guys in the gun there. Like, what have you seen from him as far as He's been outstanding and he has been in T20 cricket for quite a few years now. Um, for us, he bowls all of our tough overs as well, which, you know, it's, it's easy when you look at the stats at the end of the year and you look through the economy rates and those types of things, you might overlook someone like Benny, but what you don't take into account is that he often bowls to the short boundary and in the surges and at the death and all the really ugly overs for bowlers to bowl. So, you know, as a captain and as a coach and, you know, the fellow players, we all acknowledge that and appreciate that hard work that he does for us. So, um, you know, that, that's often overlooked when people just, you know, look through the stats list and that sort of stuff at the end of the year. He's been fantastic for us and he's, and he's been doing those, you know, ugly overs for quite a long time now for us as well. Moses, is this your biggest rival in the Big Bash? You've had so many big finals <laughs> and even a lot of controversy the way the game finished on Saturday. Was there? Well, was, we, we won with three overs to spare. That's... Yeah, but just the, the 100 going straight. Oh, that's an individual milestone. I don't think that's... To me, there's no controversy. That's up to you guys to hand that up. Um, for me, that's I was on the sideline. I was sitting there wanting that game to finish as quick as possible. You know, you, you don't play for personal milestones, and whether it's 100 or 98 or 97, it's two or three runs difference. We just want to, you know, take get that um, progression into the final. What it was a, the fact that it wasn't 100, it was 98. Still a magnificent innings. Doesn't take anything away from Vincey's efforts throughout the game. Um, and in relation to the Scorchers, we've had a lot of great battles and I think, um, you know, over, ever since BBL 01 when we played each other in the final, we've played each other in the finals a few times since then as well, in the, in the grand final. So uh, I, I feel like they've got a, a very similar sort of way that they set up and play their cricket with, you know, they've got a pretty good fielding team um, and their bowlers, you know, they're, they're really good defenders and smart with how they adapt to conditions with the ball. Um, and no matter how many runs they score or whatever they might, they, they 
just back their bowls to do the job as well. Um, so, and, and they're just fighters in terms of they scrap around. They might not always play uh, the most attractive cricket, and you know there's not a great deal of superstars throughout their list from one to eleven. But they've got you know one to eleven guys that are contributing in a lot of games, and even on the bench they've got guys coming in that contribute throughout the season. And it's very similar to how we set up our team. You know, we try not to have too many people overpowering um, what, what might be you know, a, a really strong team um, and even the six or seven guys that come out from that haven't, you know, might not play on that particular fixture. In that particular fixture, they've, a lot of them have contributed throughout the year to a victory as well. How Liam Livingston's quipped that you blokes might be running scared? I know you're not going to buy into it, but is it good to have that sort of Verbal and that sort of rugby league sort of build up <laughs> to a final and give the final its its just deserves. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure where we were running to, um, but you know, it's it's an interesting comment. I'm sure he's just trying to get a rise, you know, and that's that's great. He actually played really well um, yesterday, so you know, it'll be up to him to try and you know do that again against us, um, you know, in the next fixture. So we were able to, you know, I think our, the part of the reason we controlled that game against the Scorchers so well in that first game is how well we controlled their opening batters in the first two or three overs, and then they were forced to do things they didn't want to do after that so and again they'll they'll make it you know adaptions to how we bowled to them and and rightfully so and we'll try and adapt again to their adaptions so that's kind of you know I guess that's the game of cat and mouse with cricket you know that the, they see our, our tactics for a game and they'll make changes and then we have to sort of make changes to that as well there's a big sort of team history there with both sides playing each other before Individually, it's been some of the highest and lowest moments for you as well, man of the match in the, in the first one, and then 2015 with the throwback. Well, what are your what are your memories of those games, and what do you take more? What do you remember more? What do you take more? The, the, the games you won or the games you lost? Um, so you know, I think both provide really good learning opportunities, and you know, even even in the throwback, I. I, I seem to remember quite batting really well and bowling really well in that game, but you, you don't remember that. But I'll, I'll just I'll just remind you of that one. Um, but you know, other than that, I, I feel like whether you win or lose, a lot of teams gloss over the wins and think like that's not a learning opportunity. But I feel like the wins provide really good learning opportunities on the back of you know what may have worked and even things that you got away with for that game. Um, and then the losses, obviously, you know, and sometimes it's not always great to just keep digging up the losses as as you learn as as your learnings because you know then you, you you're sort of using a lot of negative feedback. So um, it, I feel like the game of cricket, whether you win or lose, always provides those um, opportunities for growth and learning. So it's just up up to the individual and their own analysis of their their performance and and then how that matched up with the pre-plan and was the plan right, was their execution right, and those things. But I mean, you learn so much about yourself under pressure, and usually in finals, that's when the height, when the you know the pressure and the stress seems to heighten a little bit. So that's usually when you start to learn, a, you know, in fast forward. Is the sort of thing that could come up on the field, or is it one you leave the commentators? Ah, uh, mate, it's things happen so quickly out there in T20 cricket. It's not like four-day cricket where you can plant, you know, plant a few seeds and start mulling in with the batsmen. Um, if someone said something out on the field in T20 cricket, it'd be, you know, I feel like you, you don't even have enough time to take in what, you know, what they're saying or what's going on. There's just not enough time to make someone feel uncomfortable out there. I think the only way you can do that is by bowling in areas that they can't hit it or by hitting balls into boundaries where the bowlers don't feel comfortable. I just feel like there's not much you can really say in a T20 game that's going to, you know, th there's too much happening skill-wise. So. Um, you know, if they want to come that way, that's fantastic. But it'll be—I I feel like for our guys, it'd be like a water off, water off a duck's back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what sort of what's been the reaction to that accolade that he's received this week? I think it's really good recognition for him um, individually. For you know, obviously a fantastic year this year, but last year he had another really. He had a really good year as well, and very consistent. I feel like this year he's even taken his consistency up a notch. So. 
um, you know, for, for a young man like himself to get that, I think that's basically the reward of a lot of hard work and a lot of good processes. So it's, it's nice to, to get that feedback for him, but it, you know, it doesn't really change what he's done. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a little something to, to show for everything that he's done. Um, and then tomorrow, again, for him, it's just another opportunity to go out there and, and show his consistency and, and hopefully play well again for us tomorrow. there allowing you to adapt to almost any sort of situation that innings is in you've obviously had the surge to contend with this season how important is that pairing for you been there that's been a huge um like it it almost gives us a second crack at a game when we've at times through the season we felt like maybe in the past or um, in years gone by where we, we're not sure if we've had enough power or whatever it might have been. Having those two guys there and especially, um, you know, I think T Tom Curran sort of provided that a little bit in the past as well. But Dan, the way that he struck it this year, we know Jordan can fix it and we know Dan can accelerate it. So you know, having those two guys in the middle there gives the top four so much freedom um, to play the best that they can do and not worry too much because we know we've got the people in the shed afterwards as well as you know seven eight and nine as well who can all who can all bat um and you know and contribute as well but those two guys as you touched on there's it, it gives it gives the team a lot of confidence um and and those are definitely a targeted signing you know when coming into this year was, we, we looked around and we thought how can we get better from last year even though we did win win last year we thought there was an opportunity um, for a bit of growth there in the middle, in the middle order and closing out games with the bat um, with some extra power. Even though Jordan's done so well um, in his role and, has, and he's taken even his role to a new level this year. But, um, you know, recruiting Dan and not, not only the experience that he brings, but that power hitting, obviously, um, and then the experience out in the middle as well. So that's, um, you know, that's just another little dynamic that I feel that makes why we've been able to finish where we have this year. Year ago when you were talking indoors and people rain forecast for next year. Yeah. Whereas I appreciate this forecast isn't nearly as bad, but is that experience last year a good sort of like the mindset, the sort of template for how to attack if there is a bit of rain, sort of a rain in the game? Yeah, um yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure. I think this year, because there is a reserve day as well, so there's um, either way. You kind of know that you're going to get out there and play some cricket at some stage. Um, but I mean, even last year. Um, we were just trying to relax if, if it was going to, if it was raining, obviously, you know, there's nothing we can do about it, but know that, that when it came time, game time, that we had to be switched back on and try not to play the game too much while the rain's coming down. Cause I think that can often happen when, when it is, when there is bad weather or there, it is raining, you start, you know, trying to forecast too many things in your own head about whether you're going to play, whether you're not going to play, all these types of things. So I think the key for us, again, similar to what we did last year, is just to you know, relax or prepare like we would for any other fixture, irrelevant of what the weather's doing or the prediction of the weather, because at the end of the day, you only need it to stop raining here for a, for a couple of hours and we're back out there playing, just like you know, when the clouds opened up last year. So. Yeah, I mean it's an inconvenience for us because it means we have to we actually have to play to win. Um, the comp when you finish first, <laughs> you know, last year if the game didn't go ahead, we just got the trophy. So, um, but no, it is an inconvenience for everyone, and obviously everyone who's bought tickets and and the, you know having to stage another game and everything. So I think we'll do everything we can. Obviously, if there is rain around, there's talk about extending the time that we can play to on the night so that you know the people that you know got in and got their tickets get a show and get some entertainment. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that will change, um, I guess, the, the roughness of the year, so to speak, and living out the suitcases. Um, but I think, and I sort of spoke to the guys today, um, you know, relevant of the outcome of tomorrow for us, I don't think it takes away a really strong season for, from our guys. Um, you know, as long as they're, they're learning and they're in, you know, increasing their capacity as individuals and as a team, um, I feel like you know, tomorrow all we can do is go out and try and play as well as we can. Um, and then trying to predict what that will mean for us after we win or lose, like I, I don't know what it will mean, but um, you know, I, I feel like the, everyone in our, within our squad, whether it's the staff or the players, um, the administrators, and even Cricket Australia to, 
to be able to get all the games in um, this BBL um, and you know make base there hasn't been any there's been a few inconveniences but we haven't missed any cricket um, or anything like that and during the times that we've had of course through COVID and everything like that I think it's been a pretty special effort to be able to provide that sort of entertainment for everyone and and for our guys to you know come out on top in terms of through the regular season um, and to have the way that they've dealt with those challenges you know we this this will be our first home game of the year where I think most of our, most other teams have had home games at some stage so uh, I think it's just a testament to the characters that we have in our group and how level they've able to st they've been able to stay and, and I'm sure the players would thank the staff and all the administrators who have also kept them motivated, given them days off when they've needed needed to and then you know when training's on they're, they're full of energy as well because it's not just the players who get tired.